you describe what you do? If I was like not afraid of sounding cheesy, I'd say being a revolutionary. Um, but that does sound horrendously cheesy. In my role and also outside of my role, I, I would see myself as an activist because I think most people are, really. Members of my family are police officers um, and my dad's a banker. And it's quite awkward because like I've dealt with police violence and stuff and I do a lot of things counter to like my dad's interests. So it's, yeah, it's awkward. Sometimes with the, the sheer mass number of people that are there, it does make sense to have the police there, but not in the way that, for example, at the free education demonstration, the way that the police were there was in a very intrusive and violent sort of way. Collectively, protest movements suffer as a result of police violence. So I think violence against the police is fine. I think that if we want a revolution, we need to confront the state and capitalise. Sometimes it's not useful. Sometimes it can be tactically or strategically a bad idea. Um, but ultimately, it's a bit of a war, right? And you don't go into war saying we're not going to fight our opponent. Um, when I was on the free education demo, for example, it was a really nice, peaceful... Good protests, like positive, very little negative stuff, like a small group of anarchists and walked into a pub and with our placards and everyone turned around and stared at us and said, have you seen the news? And we looked up at the big screen and there's just like pictures of one person fighting the police and it was made to look as though that was the reason why all 3,000 people that had gone to that march there was to have a fight with the police. I keep on getting stung by journalists. I like, because I do press stuff for the NCOC and often we'll like meet a journalist and talk about, uh, I don't know, we'll have like a, a long chat, like quite a personal chat and they'll be like sympathetic to you and they'll be like, oh, I'm on your side and you'll like talk and develop a rapport. But journalists only do that to get you to talk so that they can sting you. That's how it always works. The Guardian even, you know, this supposedly left-wing newspaper, um, as soon as a cop hits a protester, it becomes police violent or like violence, you know. Violent anarchists. Because when you spend a lot of time looking into a movement and talking to the people concerned, you start to understand what's actually going on. And what's actually going on is not as black and white as the media portrays it. And there's a lot more in there. The energy coming from, from them, uh, it's uh, so powerful that I feel involved. It's for my children and grandchildren, it's all good, it's not so much for me. I mean, I'm from Australia and you wouldn't see anything like this. People fighting for what they truly believe in, so it's incredible. So, I was first diagnosed with depression um, in the spring of this year. Being in like an elected public role, like I get a lot of abuse on social media. Um, and basically it resulted from a long period of being very heavily involved in politics and also police violence on December 3rd at Warwick, which is, we had a sit-in, uh, the police came in, uh, security, university security alleged that someone assaulted them never happened um, and they came in with tasers and CS gas and arrested three of us, brutalised the rest of us um, and our university turned on us. I got named on an injunction when my university sued me for unlimited legal costs after we went into an occupation um, and we basically had a period of really intense and long struggle. Oh, you have to crush yourself. You literally have to totally crush yourself and that, that isn't me being hyperbolic. Like, I'm going to have to take some time out of activism at the moment because my mental health is really not doing well. And there are thousands of people all over the country just like, who basically have, have given their entire lives to, to try and do it. Um, and so I don't think you should underplay the extent to which like, on a higher level of involvement, um, it could be quite damaging and quite, you know, there's not much else in your life. I think there's a quote by Audre Lorde that's, um, I think it's, Self-care is self-preservation, which is an act of political warfare. Um, so it's important to make sure that you're healthy and you know, giving yourself time out from these things because it's draining to constantly come up against, like, like just constantly 
come up against challenges and, and not able to actually achieve what you want to and knowing that your progress is going to be incredibly slow and, and that you're not going to see progress for a long time. It's just despair is, is dangerous. I, it's hard to avoid sometimes because you look around and just things are so awful that it can be really hard to, to keep on fighting at that point. And I don't think I'm ever going to just stop believing what I believe, but there comes a point where to keep on struggling is, is really the hardest thing.